The Anti-Defamation League has been documenting for decades how hate groups have used conflict over immigration to advance their white supremacy, their hate, their stereotypes. And now we're concerned that the exact same rhetoric is moving from the hate sites to the nightly news, coming out of the mouths of some politicians, opinion elites, and even we're afraid around the dinner table. You've got a wholesale invasion, the greatest invasion in human history, coming across your southern border, changing the country. We've seen hate speech and code words used against immigrants and Latinos in a number of ways, each one designed to spark fear in the hearts of people, to paint them as a threat to our values and to our communities. And there are four main themes we see. The first is the sense that immigrants are an army of invaders. They're coming here to attack our way of life, to subvert our values. And it puts the suggestion in people's minds that they are a threat and something communities should rise up against. You say that the, the greatest invasion in history, the third world, et cetera, et cetera, talking about mm -hmm. the invasion at our borders, and I agree with you. We are, we are in a war with Mexico right now. They, they're the only ones fighting it, of course. It wasn't just a dozen folks uh, who are ensconced in the ivory tower who believe that the Southwest is Ozatlan and it belongs to them. We're it's looking just changed. at 10% more people here in 10 years than we have now, uh, all foreign nationals. I think it is almost inevitable if we do not put a fence on that border. I agree with you're you. You're going to have 100 million Hispanics in the country, most of them new immigrants from Mexico, which believes that belongs to them. The second theme is one of dehumanization. Uh, immigrants are talked about as swarms, hordes, uh, and even worse. And when you begin to teach good people and children in schools to think of a group of their neighbors as animal-like, less than human. You train them to think of their neighbors as less deserving of rights and maybe even targets of hate and worse. If they're I mean, an illegal alien, they're not an American and they're not decent. And then this big, vast wave of low-skilled, poorly educated, people illiterate in any language, no high school degree coming into the country. What jobs do the women and the children do that we have to have them here other than the children's job is to dumb down the American children and overpopulate our schools? But you call them immigrants, and I wish you would stop insulting immigrants uh -huh. by comparing them to illegal aliens. It's very rude. The next theme is the sense that immigrants bring crime and disease. You can see false accusations, inaccurate statistics and science talking about a disproportionate problem of malaria, other kinds of disease that are coming into our country through the immigrants that come here. And then you instill in good people a, a sense of threat to their basic well-being, the public safety. Now immigrants are a public health risk. The number of illegal immigrants in our prisons was increasing and the financial burden rising. Three of our reports covered rape or sexual predators in the context of illegal immigration in this country. Now they're importing drugs and illegal aliens. 7,000 cases, active cases of leprosy. So the number of cases of leprosy in this country. One of the reasons we screen people coming into this country is to deal with communicable diseases like leprosy, disease or other illnesses, and illegal aliens. And the fourth theme we're seeing is a conspiracy theory, and that is that Mexican immigrants come to the United States to reconquer the Southwest and take back land that had once belonged to Mexico. There has been much, dis much discussion about the so-called Reconquista, which is the retaking of old Mexico territories, which are now part of the United States, by pure birth rate. But I'll tell you this, I do believe we're going to lose the American Southwest. We already have a problem where forces trained by the U.S. military, such as Los Zetas, which controls the border more than the Border Patrol, were trained by the American military at Fort Benning, South Carolina. The culture that they live in and the place they live in is supposed to um, assimilate to them as opposed to the other way around. You are going to end up right, but here, um, with here's a balkanized country, and here's, that's what we have. But as far as I'm we're concerned... In, you know what, Pat? We are in such denial. You, you think that training these... <laughs>
these people with arms Man. and demolitions is a good <laughs> idea. You got 60% of the people in Mexico that feel that the United States shouldn't even control the Southwest United States, and you're going to train them in arms and explosives? Bet the French are glad they didn't do that before the illegal alien started burning half the country over the last two years. So, man, right? you if you look at the Mexican consulates that are active political lobbyists who've entrenched themselves in the American mainstream and who have succeeded in blurring the lines between illegal and legal immigration, yes, there's a well, plan. I think that there's a huge number of folks contiguous to Mexico. Our ancestors came across the seas, and they're, they look, they've got their own language, their own culture. They but don't want to be Americans. Similar. And so when people all over the country are trained to think of immigrants as invading our way of life, trying to rip apart our civilization and undermine our values, when we're trained to think of them as a little bit less than, less deserving of rights, less human, animal-like almost, and when we're trained to think of them as bringing disease and bringing criminality into our communities, and when we're trained to think of them as even people who would subvert the rule of law of the United States and take back territory, good people will be inculcated to hate. And the suggestion is not that implicit that maybe communities should take matters into their own hands. And my gosh, we better wake up soon. It's, or or we're, we're going to wake up dead. The Anti-Defamation League is exposing these trends and this rhetoric because words have consequences. There is a direct connection between the policies we have in our society, the words of leaders, and the daily lives of minority communities and immigrants. And unfortunately, we have seen hate crimes against Latinos, Asians, and other immigrants on the rise.